Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about islet speaking vocabulary. Our topic is going to be extreme sports. Extreme sports. You can use this vocabulary in your islet speaking part 1, part 2 and part 3. Before we begin the lesson, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and encourage me to keep uploading more videos. Also, do not forget to share this video with others so that they can also benefit um, and by doing that, you will be helping me to help them. So share the video on all your social media platforms. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to this channel for more helpful videos. Now, in this lesson, as I said, we are going to learn about islet speaking vocabulary. I'm going to divide the lesson into three parts. In the first part of the lesson, I will give you um, some examples of extreme sports and I will explain to you what they mean. In the second part of the lesson, I will give you some reasons as to why people do extreme sports. And in the third part of the lesson, I will explain to you using the vocabulary why it is risky to involve yourself in extreme sports. So let's begin with the first part where I'm going to give you some examples of extreme sports. The first one is parachuting. Parachuting. Parachuting is the activity or the sport of jumping from an aircraft that is a plane with a parachute. So in parachuting, you jump from a plane or an aircraft with a parachute. That is parachuting. The next one is skydiving skydiving what is skydiving skydiving is the sport of jumping out of an airplane okay it is a sport of jumping out of an airplane and falling freely through the air before opening your parachute okay skydiving is the sport of jumping out of an airplane and falling freely through the air before opening your parachute. The next extreme sport that we are going to talk about is wakeboarding. Wakeboarding. What is wakeboarding? Now, wakeboarding is an example of an extreme sport that um, for some people might be quite scary. Um, because um, it involves riding over water on a short surfboard and performing stunts while holding a rope towed by a speedboat. So you ride over water on a short surfboard and at the same time you're performing stunts while you're being pulled by um, a rope attached to a speed boat okay riding over water on a short surfboard and performing stunts while holding a rope towed by a speed boat the next extreme sport that we are going to look at is rock climbing rock climbing now what is rock climbing Rock climbing is the activity of climbing rocks, okay, of climbing cliffs or rocks um, as a hobby, okay. All you do is you climb cliffs or rocks uh, on mountains, for example, uh, as a sport. Some people just enjoy doing that. The next word is surfing, surfing. That is another example of an extreme sport and surfing is really a sport which involves riding on top of a wave while standing or lying on a special 
surfboard okay surfing is a sport that uh, involves riding on top of a wave while standing or lying on a special surfboard the other example of um extreme sport that i have put for you on the board as an example that you could give to the examiner during your IELTS speaking test is white water rafting. And white water rafting involves the riding on a raft of a rough and dangerous parts of a fast flowing river. So for you to do white water rafting, you need a very fast flowing river, okay, and a raft okay and you can ride through okay you can ride over the rough and dangerous parts of the, this fast flowing river okay so obviously to do white water rafting you need to be good in swimming just in case it goes wrong uh, that can prevent you from drowning now the next extreme sport that I will talk about is number seven, and that is parasailing. Parasailing. Parasailing is a sport in which a water skier wearing a parachute is towed or pulled by a speedboat, becomes airborne, that is, they are lifted high up in the air, and they sail along in the air. Okay? Parasailing. It is a sport in which a water skier, someone who is skiing on water, wearing a parachute, is pulled by a speedboat and they become airborne or they're lifted in the air and they sail along in the air. Okay, that is parasailing. So I have explained to you seven different type of extreme sports, what they mean. I will pronounce the words for you just once more so that you know how to uh, pronounce them. Number one is parachuting. Number two, skydiving. Number three, wakeboarding. Number four, rock climbing. Number five, surfing. Number six, white water rafting. Number seven, parasailing. Now, in the second part of the lesson, I will explain to you... Um, using this vocabulary, why people choose to do extreme sports. So if the examiner asks you, why do people do extreme sports? The first answer you can give is number eight. They do extreme sports because it gives them an adrenaline rush. It gives them an adrenaline rush. An adrenaline rush is a very high sense of excitement. Okay, they feel pumped up. They feel pumped up. That is an adrenaline rush. It's the kind of uh, uh, feeling that you experience if you see something dangerous um, coming to attack you. Like, for example, if you see a wild animal that is about to attack you, your body uh, releases that adrenaline hormone that can make you run very fast. So people who do extreme sports, some of them do it because it gives them a buzz. That buzz is an adrenaline rush. Number nine, crave for fame. Some people do extreme sports because they crave for fame. To crave is to have a strong desire to be famous. Okay, They crave for fame. They want to be famous. They have a very strong desire to be famous. They crave for fame. Number 10, to keep fit. Some people do extreme sports because they want to stay healthy. They want to be physically fit. Okay. Uh, so you can say to keep fit. Okay. To keep fit is to stay physically healthy. Number 11, some people do extreme sports to push themselves out of their comfort zone to push themselves out of their comfort zone. Now, to push yourself out of your comfort zone is to do something that you would not normally do, something that is not comfortable for you to do. That is pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, okay? 
pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Most of the times, human beings like to do things that are comfortable, that don't require a lot of uh, effort, that are not scary. But when you do extreme sports, you push yourself out of your comfort zone. Number 12, to challenge themselves. So some people do extreme sports because they want to challenge them, themselves. They want to do something that is difficult. They want to do something that will make them feel like they have achieved something, like they have achieved a, a goal in their life to challenge themselves, to do something that is difficult and achieve it, okay? To challenge themselves. When you challenge yourself, it means that you do something that is out of your comfort zone, um, to give you a sense of satisfaction, to give you a sense of satisfaction. Number 13, they like taking risks. Now, some people do extreme sports because they like taking risks. To take a risk is to do something that is dangerous. You, you, you take a risk, you do something knowing that it could go absolutely wrong, but you still do it because you like taking risks. Number 14, they like the element or sense of danger. Some, do, some people do extreme sports because they like the element of or sense of danger. They like to, to do or to experience dangerous things. They like to take risks, okay? They like to take risks. They like to experience that feeling of danger. Number 15, due to peer pressure. Yes, some people do extreme sports due to peer pressure. Now, peer pressure means that um, you have a group of friends and they all say, let's go parachuting. And because you don't want to look like the one who is um, a, a, a sissy or you, you, you don't want to look like the one who is a coward, okay, you don't want to feel left out. So because your friends are doing it, you do it too. That is peer pressure. Peer means friends. Okay? The people that you hang out with are your peers. And if they want to go parachuting, you don't want to get left out. So you do it out of peer pressure. You do it due to peer pressure. Number 16, to impress their friends. Now, some people do extreme sports to impress their friends due to peer pressure. To impress their friends is to make their friends think that, you know, they are the best. To impress them, you know, to give them um, that feeling that um, they are, that, that they are better. Okay, you want to impress your friends. You want your friends to think that you're tough. Okay, now, number 17 they get a kick out of it. To get a kick out of it is to get a buzz out of something, to get a sense of um, adrenaline rush. You get a kick out of it. You're buzzing. You know, you're excited. You get a kick out of it. Okay. So to get a kick out of something is to experience a great sense of uh, excitement and eu euphoria and a sort of adrenaline rush. You get a kick out of it. You, buy, you, you get a buzz out of it. Number 18, they do it as a bet. Now, what does that mean? Um, let's say your friends say that, um, one of your friends say to you, if you parachute, I'm going to give you $100. If you parachute, I'm going to give you $100. If you skydive, I'm going to give you 50 pounds. So you decide to do it so that you can get the money. That is a bet. So some people will do it as a bet. Number 19, due to social media influence. This is very true. Some people do extreme sports because of social media influence. These days, anybody who does any sort of extreme sports, uh, they video themselves and they post their, their, their videos on social media. For example, on YouTube or on Instagram, okay, or on TikTok. And when other people view these videos, they also want to do it. So that is social media influence. Number 20, due to influence by others. This is a little bit like 
uh, 19, but it simply means when they see other people doing it, they also decide to try it out as well. So due to influence by others, you see other people skydiving and you think, oh wow, that's, that, that looks fantastic. I'm going to try it. Now that is influence by others. 21. They put themselves at risk. Now, this brings me to the third section of this lesson where I'm going to give you some uh, reasons as to why extreme sports are dangerous, okay? Why you should not consider doing extreme sports. 21. They put themselves at risk. Every single time that you do any form of extreme sport, you put yourselves you put yourself at risk. That means that you are uh, making it uh, easier for yourself to experience some serious injuries. You put your life at risk. Okay, you put yourself at risk. When you parachute, it could go absolutely wrong, and instead of um, diving. Uh, the way you should, it, it could go absolutely wrong and you end up dying or breaking every single bone that you have. It could go absolutely, it re, it's quite risky. It is dangerous. Now, 22, sustain life-threatening injuries. Yes, extreme sports is quite dangerous because if it goes wrong, you could sustain life-threatening injuries. To sustain is to get. You could get uh, life-threatening injuries. Life-threatening means that you could get injuries that might kill you, okay? Life-threatening. You could get injuries that could lead to death. So, to sustain life-threatening injuries means to get life-threatening injuries. So, uh, one of the reasons as to why you should not consider doing extreme sports is because you could sustain life threatening injuries. 23. You can have a close call with death. Now that is an English expression when we say, uh, I had a close call with death. That means that you nearly died. If you say, I had a close call with death, it means that you nearly died or lost your life. Okay. So one of the things uh, one of the reasons as to why you should not do extreme sports is because you can have a close call with death, meaning that you could sustain life-threatening injuries. You could die from it. You can have a close call with death. You can come very close to almost dying. 24. Have a narrow escape. Now, if you do uh, extreme sports and you have... Um, you sustain life-threatening injuries or you have a close call with death, but you, you survive, then you say, I had a narrow escape. A narrow escape means that you nearly died, but you survived. Okay? I had a narrow escape. So, there you go. That's the vocabulary that you could use to speak about extreme sports, either during your ILET speaking part one, part two, or part three. In my channel, I have actually uploaded a number of videos on how to talk about extreme sports during your ILET speaking. So I'm going to attach the links to those videos in the description box. Have a look at your description box and have a look at the comment section. I will attach the links to those videos so that you can see how to use all this vocabulary during your IELTS speaking test. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really cheers me up. I can't begin to explain to you how happy I get when I upload a, a video and people give the video a thumbs up. It just gives you encouragement. At the end of the day, 
I'm only human. When you give me a thumbs up, it makes me happy. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up and help me to help other people by sharing this video on all your social media platforms. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos on eyelids speaking, eyelids writing, and of course on my channel, I also have a lot of videos on uh, grammar, vocabulary, how to speak English in different situations. And if you're a literature student, if that's what you're interested in, I also have a playlist on literature. Now, thank you very much and see you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.